You've got to have a great website. I don't care who you are, what you do, because the first thing that someone's going to do when they say, oh, you do lending, I want to learn more about that, where are they going to go? They're going to go to your website. So if your website looks like crap or you don't have one at all, you're losing out on that potential lead. Number two is you've got to show yourself to be someone of authority. If you're a real estate investor and are wondering how to raise and leverage private money to make more profit on every deal, then you're in the right place. On Raising Private Money, we'll speak with new and seasoned investors to dissect their deals and extract the best tips and strategies to help you get the money, because the money comes first. Now here's your host, Jay Connor. My guest today has raised millions of dollars of private money. So what a great match here to have my guest here on the show, Raising Private Money. A little bit of his background, he's an international speaker. He has spent over 4,000 hours on stages and he's helped more than 15,000 people all across the United States and five countries around the globe, helping people just like you raise money and get all plugged into digital marketing. He's also an Amazon best-selling author, and he's been personally responsible for helping entrepreneurs, literally thousands of them, generate millions of dollars in profits. He's been featured on some of the top-name podcasts, over 50 of them. He's a founding member of the Forbes Real Estate Council, providing direction and information in the real estate space for all Forbes readers. On top of that, he's been published and featured on ABC, CBS, Fox, and NBC. Now, in addition, as I mentioned to private money, he is an expert in all things digital marketing. In just a moment, you're going to meet my special guest, Bob McIntosh, right after this. Well, hey, Bob, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, Jay. I truly appreciate being here. And for everyone watching and listening, thanks for tuning in. I know your time is important, so I appreciate it. Absolutely. Bob, uh, before we uh, went live here on the show, uh, you and I were talking for a little bit, and you said something that just really piqued my interest and got my attention. And I want you to explain what you meant when you said digital marketing and raising money sort of all goes hand in hand. What do you mean by that? And I guess a good place to start is what is digital marketing? Yeah, so let's uh, let's you know framework some some terminology so we're all on the same page. For me, at least, I consider digital marketing to be everything and anything digital. So that could be social media, your website, could be you know your CRM that you're using, anything that operates on on a computer more or less, which is a lot of what we do as investors kind of falls into that digital marketing space. Now on the marketing portion, obviously we're talking about reaching out to folks, connecting with people, finding out what they need and how we can help them, whether it be raising money, doing deals, whatever it might be. Um, so that that's sort of how I would define digital marketing. Now, the thing that I found, um, and, and just to give context, right? So at this point in time, um, you know, been doing real estate for a long time. We actually own at this point, because we've been focusing more on rentals, a rental portfolio, probably approaching about $2 million that I've bought with uh, 20,000 out of my own pocket. That's it. All the rest was from private money. And a large chunk of that private money came from people that saw me, hear me speak, do things of that nature. But a lot of it also came from people who found me online. And they found me, they understood, hey, I offer value to them that they didn't know about. And I showed them how they can plug into money, all right, with someone that they trust. Because let's be real, I'm sure your, your listeners know this. No one's giving you hundreds of thousands of dollars if they don't trust you. Uh, and basically said, hey, look, how, how do I build that trust online so that more people can find me, more people know who I am, I build more trust, and then ultimately, like I said, helps me build uh, more private lenders. Would you say that you've raised more private money from people that you didn't know, uh, they weren't like, you know, connections you already had, and uh, most of that private money came from people finding you online? Um, I would say, so I would say... Most of our money, probably over 90% has come from people who didn't know me. And what I mean by that is didn't know me initially, like not family members or friends or coworkers or someone that I had an existing relationship with prior to beginning the relationship of becoming a private money lender with them. Um, 
I would say that's probably the case for most of them. Uh, and then most of them have found us, um, yeah, I would say online. I would say not necessarily, I, I want to I be fair. I would say half of them know me from someplace, but know me from online in that place. So what I mean by that is it, it could be a, a group that we're part of on Facebook, or it could be, um, you know, uh, 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 a, a coaching program, for example, that they saw me or they met me at a virtual event online or things of that nature. Um, so when I say, you know, I'm, I'm kind of counting that in there as well. Got you. Yeah. Um, I've been raising private money myself for my single family house deals since 2009. Uh, interestingly enough, I haven't done any of it uh, through digital marketing. So this is a really interesting conversation that you and I can have here, Bob. Uh, all of my raising has been through networking and connections of people and starting with my own network. And then, you know, um, broadening out from there. So if someone from your own experience, if someone had never raised private money online, uh, what are some steps and advice you would give as to how someone uh, could start uh, what I call getting the word out there and letting people know that you work with private lenders and, and thus and so? Yeah, that's a great question. So Prior to getting the word out there that you're doing this, um, I want to be very clear. There's a couple of things that are a little bit different online and raising it versus in person. Because in person, we get that physical handshake. We have that, that rapport that we can build. We see everyone's body language uh, as we're conversing with them. So we get a lot of those details. When it comes to doing this online, we lose a lot of that same functionality. Right? We don't have those inputs to gather and, and build um, a library of trust with someone on. And so how do we get, for, before you ever start raising money online, um, I think a couple of things have to be absolutely true. Uh, this is not to say that you 100% have to do these, but I'm going to promise you, your conversations will be easier, quicker, and you'll raise more money if you do these things first. Number one, you've got to have a great website. I don't care who you are, what you do, because the first thing that someone's going to do when they say, oh, you do lending, I want to learn more about that, where are they going to go? They're going to go to your website. So if your website looks like crap or you don't have one at all, you're losing out on that potential lead. Number two is you've got to show yourself to be someone of authority on social. And I don't necessarily mean that you have to have millions of followers and all of this stuff, but be posting on a regular basis. Talk about the things. Show up and be active on, on these social networks. Again, not required, but it's going to help your deal, uh, your potential you know, deals with PMLs become easier, faster, and raise more is have a great system for follow-up because what I found is that it takes more, um, more no, like a higher quantity of interactions to close someone from online than it does in person, right? It might be three, four, five conversations before I get them to a verbal yes when they know nothing about me and they're just cold person coming in online. Um, and so we use our CRM, for example, to do that so I can track every person, where they are and how many conversations I've had, the notes that I have on them. So that way when I hop back on that next conversation with them, uh, we, we're going to close a little bit easier. Now, um, when you do all those things to start with, um, as a as a, a back end to building yourself and your presence, you're going to find every conversation and being out there a whole lot easier. Then as far as actually finding the right people, um, I mean, we could talk about that for a long time. Um, I really believe LinkedIn is an untapped resource right now in finding lenders. And I can dive into that more if you want me to. I'll kind of let you lead the conversation here. But, um, you know, have those back end pieces first, then use social media to start reaching out and find the right kinds of people. So to recap, what, you, what you're saying, your advice is to have to really build credibility and trust which, as you said, is more challenging online than we are, you know, face to face in person. You got to have a fantastic website. Right. Uh, you got to be active, posting on social media. And thirdly, a not a uh, do it when you think about it, but a systemized process on follow up with these potential private lenders. Let's unpack each three of those for a little bit. Let's go back to the website. What are some key elements of having a fantastic website that makes a website fantastic? Yeah. Versus, uh, versus a crap web, website. <laughs> 100%. Yeah. We, we, I always like, um, when we look at a website and what makes a great website, right? So a couple of things come to mind. First and foremost, think about it kind of like SATs. I don't know if you remember taking those or not, but. Oh, um, boy, do I remember taking SATs. Yeah. I'm surprised, <laughs> I'm surprised I got admitted into any college. 
right? Well, so do you remember, so when you took the test, you had to, if you put your name in the paper and you didn't answer any questions, you got kind of a baseline score. But if you answered all the questions wrong, you actually did worse than if you didn't answer any of the questions at all. Websites are kind of like that, right? Like if we have nothing at all, it's actually better than having a bad website because now they're judging us versus just, oh, they just don't have a website, right? There's nothing for us to judge. So what makes a great website? A couple of things in my opinion. Number one, design. Um, right now, if you look at the stats, on average, 96% of people are judging you solely on the design of your website. And 94% will leave within less than five seconds if the design is bad, outdated, or just looks, you know, janky. Um, and so what does that, you know, mean? Well, I'm not going to dive into all the, like, the specific elements of good design, but you'll know it when you see it, right? Like, when you go to a website today, you look and you go, ah. Right, like if that's the feeling when they come to your website, probably not very good. Right, um, so that's number one. Number two is going to be communication of the information. This is the, the next most critical piece. Help them find what they want when they come to the site to look for you as quickly and as easily as possible. What that means is don't bury your stuff eight menus deep, especially for lenders. Don't make it difficult to go for them to find you. Like make it clear: here's who I am, here's how I what I do, and here's how I do it. If I can do those things and um, wrap in your story, ideally, one of the best um, ways I found to do that, and this is something that we do with all the sites that we design for any of our clients, is we use um, the Story Brand Framework by uh, Donald Miller. Um, he, and if you just Google it, there's a free piece for the website, at least. It kind of walks you through how to build your website to tell your story. That's going to help you guys a whole lot better because guess what? No one wants to lend to you unless they know who your story is and they feel like they can either resonate with your story or your story builds trust in your ability for you to pay them back. Um, so th those two things right there are going to help you stand apart from 90% of other bad or crappy websites out there. And uh, you mentioned uh, just a second ago that your company actually does design websites, right? So how about go ahead and share your company or name and, and how people can get in touch with your company and with you in case anybody's got to jump off early. Yeah. So um, best way you can find me, again, my name is Bob McIntosh, M-C-I-N-T-O-S-H. Uh, and there's my link right there, go3dc.com. Our company is called Three Degrees Consulting, hence go3dc.com slash Bob McIntosh. If you go to that link, you'll be able to connect to me on any of my socials. It also has my contact card. You can download me, text me, email me, um, you know, I, every way except for maybe smoke signals just because I may not see them traveling. But other than that, you know, you can reach out to me that way and I'll be happy to show you what we can do for you. That's awesome. So to get that fantastic website where people trust you and you've got immediate credibility, Bob is at www.go, G-O, the numeral three, dc.com forward slash Bob McIntosh, and that's M-C-I-N-T-O-S-H. Now, the second element that you said was critical on building that credibility with potential private lenders is being active on social media. What advice can you share on what to do on social media, how often to do it, what kinds of things to post to where people immediately would want to be engaged with you and curiosity is driven up? Yeah. So when we look at social media uh, and you know the best ways to really use it for raising private money, first and foremost, we've got to understand that there's two social medias <clears throat> as an investor. And now this, this is true for investors. This is not true for every niche, right? But for real estate investors specifically, there are two social medias. What I mean by that is there's the engaging, building, following, getting likes, comments, followers, um, shares, all that social media. And there's the credibility social media. And they are very different. And we can do one or the other, but only one benefits both. So let me break this down real quick. When it comes to getting private money lenders, they don't necessarily care about how many followers you have, how many likes you get, the shares you have. Um, like that stuff doesn't really matter. What they want to know is, can I trust you? Are you a person of value that I believe if I give my money to, you will pay me back? Okay, that's that's the, all that they care about. So we don't have to necessarily post seven times a day or even once a day. Like if you post two, three times even a week from a credibility standpoint, you'll be fine. Why? Because they're not looking to find you on social media. They're going to find you in other ways that you reach out to them or connect with them. And then they're going to check you out on social media. And all you have to have is content there for credibility. If you simply do that, you'll kind of win the game with the folks who come to find you, um, you know, because they want to check you out. 
Now, the other side of this, as I was saying, is for engagement following, building followers, attracting in audience members. When we look at this, this will also suffice for this, right? So I can use this methodology to get credibility and to build followers. So in all things being equal, it's better to do the engagement methodology than just the um, the credibility methodology, but understand that the engagement methodology requires very specific content done in specific ways and just a whole lot more work, right? So when we look at this right now, today, this is, you know, May of 2023, right? And I, and I, I do want to date this because this could change in a week, a month, six months, or 12 months. I don't know because we just don't know social media. But today, what does that mean? That means posting reels on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube short. That's all that matters. Pictures don't matter, carousels, not, I mean, kind of, but not really, um, videos, eh, but reels, all right? So, and when I say reels, I mean reels on Facebook and Instagram, TikToks on TikTok, and then YouTube shorts on YouTube shorts, right? That's how you get content. Now, as far as quantity and what you should do and all that stuff, um, talk about the things that your audience is going to care about that you're trying to attract. So if you need money right now, talk about the ways in which you are helping your current or you would help theoretical, all right, um, private money lenders. Now, I do want to be very, very clear. This is a, a, a caveat. You should never, ever, never, ever on your social, on your website or anything of like that, talk about current projects, rates for current projects you've got going on or anything of that nature, okay? Uh, and I'm being very black or white here. There's obviously lots of shades of gray that we can operate in um, for the purposes of this. Uh, again, I'm not an attorney or any of this, but what you don't want to happen is you don't want the SEC coming along saying, well, what are you doing? You are doing it the right way, but I don't know if you are. So I'm going to audit your whole business. So it's always best to talk about things you've actually done, share experiences from other people that you know, so third party experiences that you've seen, or the way that you might do a hypothetical deal, not an actual deal you have going on. Um, and it's just so you protect yourself. You got to be very careful when it comes to online. Again, I'm sure, you know, Jay has probably taught you guys all the right ways to do private money lending. But the problem with the SEC is this. They don't know if you're doing it right or not. And they're going to audit you, which we don't want. Trust me. It's a financial enema that you'd like to avoid. So don't do it that way. But share things that they're going to care about. How do you protect them in deals? How do you buy deals the right way so that your, your LTVs are lower? How are you, uh, you know, managing the contracting process so that that way things don't overrun? How are you doing the sales process so that sales houses sell faster, you can pay them back faster? How are you, you know, whatever it is that you're offering, like talk about all the ways that you protect your lenders uh, online and, and those things, because that's going to educate and tra uh, transpire people to go, oh, okay, he or she's doing all the right things. That's someone that I want to engage in this conversation with. So you're saying the, the really good content to, uh, to give people, and by the way, to make sure everybody understands, what's the difference between a video and a reel? Great question. So a video and a reel, the difference really comes down to the methodology in which you post it to social. So there's a button that says reels. There's a button that says photo and video. You have to choose reel. Um, that's really the only big difference. Um, at the end of the day, a reel is just a video. Um, and another thing that I'll say is a reel is almost always vertical, not horizontal, right? So, you know, if you're going to shoot a reel, you're almost always going to want to shoot it this way because um, it's going to help uh, the formatting on all of those four platforms I mentioned is all the same. It's that vertical format. So uh, is a reel, for the sake of the audience here, is a reel the same thing as live streaming? No, a reel is different than live streaming. A reel is a reel. That's the only, like, so if you go to Facebook or Instagram, there's a button that says reels. That's the only way a reel can be a reel is if you use that button when you upload your content. On TikTok, it's all the same, so it doesn't matter. On YouTube Shorts, it has to be a YouTube Short. Um, specifically, this is actually something to take note of. Um, on YouTube, your video cannot be longer than 59 seconds, 59 seconds specifically. And the reason that it's that is because shorts are under 60 seconds, but for whatever reason, at least right now, YouTube is adding a one second buffer at the end of videos. And the moment you go over 60 seconds, even 61, it's no longer considered a short by their format anymore. It's now a long form video. Um, and so 59 seconds, maximum upload time. So back to the content. Um talking about how you take care of your private lenders, uh, those maximum loan to values, um, how you sell houses quickly, how you manage uh, the projects. What's your opinion of actually videoing, I say, or reeling, excuse me. <laughs> What's your opinion of actually doing a reel of a case study of a house? I wouldn't call it a case study. That sounds too technical, but a story 
of a, of a like in single family house of here's one that we just finished. We just got it staged. Uh, it was all funded with private money. You're not talking rates. You're not talking about it. You know, we're planting seeds, right? We're planting yep. seeds. All funded by, by private money from from my private lenders. And let's take a walk through this house and, you know, do a reel where you're actually showing the house, how beautiful it was. What, what's your opinion of that? Yeah, I think that's a great methodology. You can certainly talk about that. Um, like anything, you want to mix it up. So I would do, you know, do one or two of those. I'd also talk about, hey, like here's a house. Here's how I bought the house, right? Walk through the process of you buying the house in terms of what you did to find the house, negotiate with the seller, and then say, okay, now it was time for me to, to buy the house. Well, guess what? I don't have three hundred fifty thousand dollars sitting in my bank account right now because my money's out working, right? Just like my lenders. So I actually tapped into my lenders for them to fund this deal and make it happen this way, right? Then you're, you're going to talk about, hey, now I'm selling the house, okay? House is done. It's rehabbed. We're selling the process. Here's what's going to happen. We're going to go to closing. We're all going to get checks. My lender will actually get a check directly from my title company or attorney, um, and that's how they get paid back. And like, So talk about the process, right? I think a lot of folks ignore the process and where their lenders fit in because the reality is, as lenders, you fit into literally every single part of the process because Almost none of these deals are going to happen without someone lending you money, unless you're independently wealthy, which is a whole different story. But if you're there, you're probably not listening to this show. Um, so yeah, like talk about every step of the way and how the lenders integrated into the process and what they should or could expect to happen throughout that process that you're talking about from a lending perspective. So in the real, um, so let's say we're, we're talking about a house, right? And what's your suggested call to action? What's your suggested thing to actually do the instructions to give to uh, your your viewers? Yeah, so it, I mean, if look, anything, if anything. Sorry, <clears throat> took a drink of water and uh, actually it didn't help me. So we call that that went down the wrong hole. Did. <laughs> Bless your heart, man. I know how you feel. <laughs> So uh, as we were as we were talking, you know, there's different schools of thought on these types of, you know, social content posting. Um, you know, should you, you know, should you should you have a should you have a free report or that talks about, you know, how, how to be a safe, you know, how to be how to be a private lender and do it safely, how to earn. You know, should there be a report to give away of um, how to earn high rates of return safely and securely as a private lender or. The other school of thought, Bob, is, well, should I just tell my story and let the story speak for itself? And if anybody's got curiosity, they're going to reach out to you and direct, direct message you anyway. And now the whole thing sounds, is, doesn't sound, is soft. And you're not doing a direct, um, you know, call to action, you know, telling people what to do. Yeah. So um, I kind of mix it up a little bit. My, my, my number one call to action is almost always, you know, DM me or reach out to me or, you know, message me or drop a comment and, you know, let's chat if you have questions about how that works. Because usually they're going to have questions, right? Um, and usually those questions, they're always the same 10 to 15 questions that most everyone has when they get started because it's, you know, the, you know it's the most common questions. That's why you know, we do it there. So I usually start there. Now, what I'll do sometimes is mix in a direct call to action. And if I have a free report about it, yes, I will send them there. Um, what I like to do is on my website, or my fantastic website, I always have a page for lenders. Now, on that page for lenders, I'm going to do a couple of things that I, I believe are important to success in this process. First and foremost, um, I don't generally gate information. And what I mean by that is I don't ask for an opt-in in this case. And the reason is, is that when it comes to someone who wants to lend me a bunch of money, I don't want to make the process difficult, number one. Number two, there's a lot of folks who want to um, who want to borrow money from a potential private money lender. If I make it too difficult, they're going to go to someone else who makes it easier. And there's a lot of folks out there who will make it easier if I don't, right? So that's number two. And then number three is when I do this, um, I will give them. So, for example, I might give them a whole credibility packet about how private lending works, just like you were talking about. Right. But in and throughout that entire packet is going to be ways for them to contact me, reach out to me, get them, get their information somehow into my CRM so I can start following up with them and reach out to them and have that conversation. Um, I find that that tends to work best simply because. 
um, when it comes to someone parting with hundreds of thousands of dollars that they've worked hard to earn, right? The uh, it's, it's online at least, right? The barrier of trust is very is very high, right? They, they don't have a lot of trust in who I am yet. So the more and easier I can break that down with, by just giving them as much information as possible up front, the more likely they are to reach back out to me and say, "Oh, interesting. What about this? Um, or what about that?" And then have that conversation. And everything, even in my in my document, all that is all directed towards: shoot me a text, give me a call, email me here, just reach out to me, and let's have a conversation. And I do that for a couple of reasons. Number one, I do honestly believe it just works the best way for successful results. But number two, um, when all of my communication is in that way, uh, what I am doing is I am pushing off the SEC by saying, look, I'm trying to establish a relationship with this person first before we talk about anything. Um, so it puts me better, more, more in the, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, white zone versus black zone when it comes to that. Um, but again, the most important thing is I just think it, it seems to work best for me in terms of getting more people on board as potential private lenders. Perfect. Speaking of free reports, Bob, I got one right here. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> and this uh, is my ebook, downloadable. It's called Seven Reasons Why Private Money Will Skyrocket Your Real Estate Business and Help You Build Incredible Wealth. If you want to get on the fast track to raising a lot of private money, the way Bob and I are talking about it here on the show, you can download this ebook uh, at www.jconner with an E-R, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide to get on the fast track to getting private money. That's Jay Conner, J-A-Y-C-O-N-N-E-R.com forward slash money guide for the fast track to private money. So Bob, you said the three critical elements on being on point with your digital marketing is the website. And then we got social media posting that we just talked about. And then you said a phenomenal, on purpose, intentional, well thought out, follow up system. And you know, I say it all the time. I don't care if it's private money or sellers that you're negotiating with to buy their houses. And you've heard it a thousand times too, Bob. The money is in the follow up. The private money is in the follow up. The profit on a single family house or a commercial deal is in the follow up. So share with us, Bob, what's some advice you can give on from your own experience on what does your follow-up system look like in the context of private money and private lenders? Great question. So when we look at the follow-up system for private money lenders, there's a couple of things that I think are critically important. Um, the first is to understand your private money flow. So for me, and what I mean by that is for me is, you know, I'm going to have an initial conversation. I'm usually going to have, and that's just, hey, this is what it is. Is that even of interest, right? Like, are you even like... Are you, you know, we'll pre-qualify them. Do you have money to lend? Can I show you how to tap into money? Is this something that sounds interesting? And for some folks are going to say, yes, they'll move forward in the flow. For some folks are going to say no. And I say, great. Thank you for not wasting my time any further. I don't actually say that, by the way, but you got to like, I'm not, I don't want to waste any time with people who aren't interested. If they're not going to lend to me at all, they don't need to move forward in the flow. So number two is going to be, okay, great. Well, if you're interested, let's schedule a second conversation where we can go into deeper detail about all the things. I can answer all of the questions that you have. We talk about how we protect your money, the process that we have. Um, I'll share some examples of how we've done this, um, show you some houses that we've worked on. Now, this all presumes that you actually have stuff. If you don't, that's okay. Third party, other mentors, coaches, and people that you've worked with and how they've done it right? I'm sure Jay has a ton of examples of how he's done this. You could say, look, one of my mentors that I listen to every single uh, week is Jay and Jay, you know, taught me how to do this this way. Right. Um, so that's going to be your second conversation. Usually at that point, they're going to give you either a yes, I'm willing to do this or no, I'm not. If the answer is no, I usually move them into a long-term follow-up because maybe just no today, right? Maybe they don't have the money in right now. Maybe they're, you know, still skeptical. They want to, you know, get to know you a little bit better. Who knows what it is? So usually if they've gone through the deeper presentation and it's a no, it's a no for now, not a no forever. All right. Now, uh, if they say yes, now they've moved to me, what I call uh, in our, in our sequence and our pipeline, a committed to fund. Right. So, hey, I will give you money for the next deal that you have that makes sense for for them. And so now what will happen is for us, for example, every time I get a new deal in that I need money for, I've got an entire list of people who have said, yes, I want to fund a deal. I'm going to email that group first 
And it's usually going to be a first come first serve. Who's got the money um, to lend now and get that deal going? And then, you know, obviously we work from there. And then from, from that point forward, it's okay. If they say yes to that, we'll work them through the process that we normally would and stay in communication. Now, um, here's the critical component though. And I want to go back to what I said, the no for now people. The no for now people will almost always become yeses if you follow up with them consistently. So I'm going to send them every time I post about private money on social media, I'm going to email them or text them. Hey, just had another post about this. Go check it out here. I'm going to have emails that I write and communicate to them about the deals that we do have going on. When we pay off lenders, um, usually at least once a year, I recommend this, if not once a quarter, I send out, hey, this, you know, year to date or quarter to date, we've paid X number of dollars in interest to our private money lenders. Why? Because it shows that you're actually doing the process. Now, of course, some of you may be able to do this. Some of you may not, and that's okay. Um, and by the way, I include in that all interest I've paid. So if it's a hard money lender, especially for newer investors, right? Um, I'm going to say, hey, look, I paid this much interest out to our lenders because they're still lender. They may not be considered what we would call private money lender, but it still shows that you are in the process doing this stuff uh, and making it happen. Build it over time because guess what? Those people, those no for nows will almost always become yeses later on. And then the last thing that I want to talk about from a follow-up standpoint is after you pay somebody back. So now you've gone through, you've done the whole process, you've borrowed the money, you did your thing, you paid them back, they got their interest, everything was good, right? And they're like, wow, man, like the, the money's flowing in, they're getting excited and happy about it. This is great, right? The next thing that you're going to want to do is follow up with them on another conversation about how much other money they have available for lending. My general rule of thumb is that whenever someone from an online state uh, when I say online state, what I mean is online connection that met me. Whenever they lend to me and I go through the whole first deal, almost always they will have about three times the amount of money they lent readily available for the next deal. They just wanted to kind of dip their toes in with the first one um, at a lesser amount. Um, now, is, is it always the case? No, but generally speaking, between three and as high as 6x what they gave you the first time, they'll have sitting around for the next deal because now you've, uh, you're have you a proven entity from their point of view. And Bob, I'm going to repeat what I say all the time. They always got more than they tell you. Always. <laughs> always. And you know what? They don't want it back. I mean, they don't want it back. Like, I mean, a very, I mean, when I'm using working with a new private lender and I'll call them up, I'll say, hey, we're, we're cashing out on this deal and, and we're going to be paying it off. Inevitably, they'll say, well, can't you just keep the money? <laughs> right. And I know you've heard it as well. I tell you what, Bob, you have dropped some golden, not nuggets, but golden rocks is what you have shared here on the show. And so one more time, how can people get in touch with you, Bob, and also review? I mean, you've helped over 15,000 people out here, right? So what are the different ways that you work with your clients as well? Yeah. So we are more than happy to help you. Anything that comes to digital marketing and your real estate business. Specifically, we, we uh, specialize in four different areas. The first is great websites. Um, whether you're a beginning investor or uh, you know an, an advanced investor, we've got something that can work for you. Um, we have a CRM for all of that follow-up. So I give you all of my sequences that I actually do. Um, we drop those in all like literally my entire process that I do. We drop it in for you in our CRM. It's one of the, one of the benefits of going with mine versus many of the others that are out there. Uh, and then we also do paid advertising and SEO. Um, so if you are, uh, these are really more for advanced investors versus newbie investors or investors with larger budgets. But if you want to get out there and generate more leads, we can help you there. Uh, and those, those are the main ways. If there's anything else, so I always tell everyone, look, if it involves your business, digital marketing and real estate, let's chat. Um, you can go to go3dc.com slash Bob McIntosh. Get a hold of me. Uh, if I can't help you, I probably know someone who can. Um, I'm a, a wealth of resources from having done this for 15 years. Uh, I probably know some, I, I know tons of people out there. So always happy to connect the right folks to the right people if I can't help you. But that's where we really focus in helping people grow. That's fantastic, Bob. Thank you so much for sharing your expertise. It's been a blast having you on. I appreciate it. And for all of you guys listening or watching, thank you for your time. It's the most valuable thing you can give and I don't take it lightly. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, my friend, another fantastic episode of Raising Private Money. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, also your host, and I need your help on sharing this episode. If you found this episode valuable, and I know you did, be sure and share it with someone that you know it will make a difference for them. If you happen to be watching on YouTube, be sure and subscribe and click that bell so you don't miss out. And if you're watching on or listening on iTunes or uh, Spotify, 
uh, be sure and follow as well. I'm looking forward to seeing you right here on the next episode of Raising Private Money with Jay Conner. Are you feeling inspired by the knowledge you gained in this episode? Then head over to jconner.com slash money guide. That's jconner.com slash money guide and download your free guide that shares seven reasons why private money will skyrocket your real estate investing business right now. Again, that's jconner.com slash money guide to get your free guide. We'll see you next time on Raising Private Money with Jay Conner.